Right. So I'm going to show you how you can containerize a Python application using Docker. For this video, I've made a small Flask application, but it could be any Python project at all. This is just to show you that you can communicate with the Flask endpoint outside of the Docker container. So let's just first have a look at what I have here. Um, I am using a virtual environment to manage my dependencies, but you can do whatever you want. This won't affect the outcome at all. So let me just try and run my application, which lives right here. We'll get a, a Flask server up and running on the local host on port 5000. So if I go to a browser, go to localhost 5000, I get hello world. So let's go back and see what it requires to get this up and running in a Docker image. So I'm going to stop the server, clear this out. Um, we're going to make a Docker file. And for this Docker file, we're going to need a Python image. So we'll head over to Docker Hub, put in Python right here. This is an official image. And we'll specify which version of Python that we want. So we'll take the latest one here. So write Python and then the version. And from here, we want to, first of all, install dependencies that we are going to require for our project. Then we'll copy our source code. And last, we'll run the application. All right, so dependencies. Now we're working in, fly, in the, sorry, Python. So the way we find our dependencies is by going into the Python package manager called pip and list our dependencies. So all of these we need to have inside of our Docker container in order to run, especially for this project, it's Flask. Without Flask, we can't use any of these commands. So the way you can do this is by running pip freeze. It'll actually give you formatted the dependencies the way that um, pip can install them, uh, understand them and install them. So we could do like this and take all the dependencies and copy them into a file we call requirements.txt. This is a standard way to do it. Or we could be a little terminal um, smart here and say pip freeze. So we get the output and then we want to um, pipe that output into a new file and we call that file requirements.txt. So what happens here? Instead of having to copy paste, create the file, we just get this one. It's a nice shortcut. Okay, so this file we'll have to copy. So we copy requirements.txt. Where do we want to copy it? We want to copy it in Actually, we've got something, but for now, we just want to copy it into the current directory, but we also want to make a directory for our application by doing the work directory command and putting any path inside of the container. We put it in slash app. All right. So now we're going to run. We're going to say pip install dash r for requirements. This allows it to read the requirements from a file and we'll simply say requirements.txt. So all of these will be installed one by one, just as saying pip install flash, for example. We don't have to do this. We can just put them in a file, run this command, it'll take care of it. Next thing, we need to copy over our source code. And luckily we have put all the source code files inside a directory. So it's very easy for me to, to copy all the contents and just put it inside the current directory. At last we can run by using the CMD for the process that's actually going to run inside the Docker image. And we can say Python index.py. All right. So that few different ways to run a flask application, the way I've done it, is that I have this app.run command at the end where I can in advance specify the different parameters that I want to pass along. Another popular way is to use the 
flask run command. Um, and then you wouldn't need to specify it down here, but as you run uh, the command flask run in the terminal, then you could specify like, oh, I want the port to be 5000 and so on. But this is the way I prefer to do it. So before we continue, there's one more thing. So this worked perfectly fine in our local environment because it just hosts on the local hosts. Um, but if we head over to the Flask documentation here, it's just the front page. Over at the quick start, there's a little note if you scroll down. If you want an externally visible server, you need to specify that the host should be 0.0.0.0. So, as you see here, as we're talking about, you could use the Flask run and specify it as a parameter, but I prefer to put it in here. So I say host equals 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. And that will make it visible from inside a Docker container so we can actually access it. So now we are basically, let me just check the file. We should be ready to build. So let's give it a tag of Docker Python and let's build dot for the current directory. All right, this was very quick because I have all the dependencies already. Um, let's try and docker run and we'll say what was the name docker python and as always we need to specify the port we'll make available so let's say that port 5000 is available both on the inside and outside like this so now if we go to the browser localhost 5000 let's just close it down make another one so check this actually working it'll say hello world and from the output we get uh, a log of the actual requests so that's it